I am pleased to address you at this moment upon my appointment as the leader of the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Summer. So in today's video, I wanted to quickly come and talk about uh, TB, uh, TB Joshua's church, uh, Synagogue Church of All Nations, and uh, just the latest update about that church. You know, a while back um, after he died, I made a video in which I talked about the wife taking over. And then um, and I got a lot of comments like, oh, you are lying. It's not true. He's not taking over. He said TB Joshua organized it so perfectly well that there are what's it called that there are apostles that will take over is it apostles or prophets or there was disciples something yeah something like that he said they have disciples that will take over da 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 and I, I think it was in the papers or something that the wife there was I can't remember I saw a publication somewhere that is they said the wife is not the one taking over and all of those things but uh, fast forward three months later it has happened okay it has happened those that say it's a lie it's a lie it's a lie now it has become a true. Even in that video, I, I, I actually said it and I watched a video of this woman preaching and I was like, wow, impressed. And I, so you could say, how can you be so rude? What mean you, you're impressed? What did you expect? Uh, if you're saying impressed, if you're saying you are impressed, you know, uh, what's it called? It, it means that you're expecting something less, blah, blah, blah. I have never heard that woman preach. I have never heard her preach. You know, hearing her preach for the first time, for me to say I'm impressed, how is that offensive? That is even, how is that okay? Says, I was impressed. I've never heard her preach. So, so people think because somebody is a pastor's wife, me, they will know how to preach. It's not automatic entitlement. It's not automatic. I'm going to give her that. It sounded, you know, she sounded good. Just take note of the words that I'm using. She sounded good. You know, when I say that, she didn't sound boring. She sounded like someone that knew what she was saying. She sounded like very powerful preaching, like someone that is, you know what I mean? And anyways, three months down the road, she has come out to confirm she is now in charge, okay? I'll let you guys listen to where she said it herself. Manuel, God is with us. My name is Evelyn Joshua. I am pleased to address you at this moment upon my appointment as the leader of the Synagogue Church of All Nations. To all our members, partners, friends, and compatriots in faith, I say good morning and win today. It has been three months since the glorious home call of our dear father, founder, and general overseer, senior prophet, Demetrope Balogun Joshua, which occurred on the 5th of June, year 2021. These past three months have surely been challenging, but we thank you all for remaining strong and for keeping the faith as we have been trained built, instructed, and taught by God's servant himself that trials are the soil upon which faith flourishes. We salute your faith. Today, like always, is a new dawn in the Synagogue Church of All Nations. As we all know, Prophet T.B. Joshua fought the good fight of the kingdom and finished strong to the glory of God. We have now commenced the journey from where our father left the baton. He had already prepared us all for this new phase, and we must rise up to the occasion as a team under the command of God and the direction of the Holy Spirit. The journey is for all. all. The Synagogue Church of All Nations cannot be without you, all the members, partners, and friends of the ministry. So, this now serves as a clarion call for you all to rise as an army of God as we push this great commission forward. I am not your general overseer. My dear husband and our dear father, the prophets for generation, senior prophet T.B. Joshua, remains the founder and the general overseer of the Synagogue Church of All Nations. Like my beloved husband used to say, let love lead. Today, I represent the symbol of that love, even as it continues to reside by the right hand of his maker. I am only a servant who under the leadership and direction of the Holy Spirit will team up with you all 
to direct the affairs of this great ministry. We will work together, pray together, fight the fight of faith together, win together, so that we can all inherit the everlasting home together. I know that we have all missed the congregation of our brethren for the past one and a half years. But let me assure you that as God leads, we shall all soon converge again and worship God together as a family. So watch out. There is no gain saying, the fact that I and the entire team, we need your prayers, support, encouragement, and advice all at this time. The duty is much. The burden is heavy. But we will all cast them onto Jesus, who has already given us a promise of his help. I thank you all once again for the love and support you have shown to this ministry and senior prophet T.B. Joshua for the past years. But if there's any time to show that love more, the time is now. Let me again assure you, as it has always been the watchword of this ministry, that God is always with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. God bless you all. Thank you. Now, I want to talk about the area of, not the way they have a Facebook page where they always uh, stream the videos of uh, TB Joshua. They always, you know, post his videos, any videos for the week or whatever services they had for the week. You know, and stuff like that, they always post his videos. And I noticed that even since he's gone, I haven't seen, you know, it doesn't seem to be that there was someone that was preaching in that church. If you watch there, all I seem to see were, they were just basically recycling videos of TB Joshua preaching. And I, I remember wondering to myself, how long are they going to keep recycling? So is there no somebody else that's going to start preaching in the church? Is there no one else that's there to actually take his place and start do the, doing this preaching? Why do they have to keep recycling and recycling his preaching? And, uh, and on top of that, what came to my mind is this, you know, what happens when, when people place a human being in a position that belongs to God? Okay, I, I, I keep emphasizing on that. Place the human beings in a position that belongs to God. If God is the shepherd, if God is the shepherd of his flock, okay, and, and anything happens to a church member, to a pastor, whatever, because God is the shepherd of the flock, there will be no difference in the sense that God is still here. But when a human being has been made a shepherd, but don't forget, the Bible says the Lord is my shepherd, not my pastor is my shepherd. Are you listening? Not my G.O. is my shepherd. Not, no, the Lord is my shepherd. God should be, you know, God should be our shepherd. And I, let me tell you another thing people have to realize. Like, I, the church that I attend is not only pastor that preaches. Sometimes, church members, this is why I keep telling people about, you know, what the Bible says that, you know, um, a student is not above the teacher. But if a student is well trained, he can become like the teacher. And I keep saying that this idea of making pastors, these mighty people among you, it's not, that's not how it should be. We should be fellow believers in Christ. Everybody, you can be, you are coming to church for decades and you are still coming there to sit down. And take every single thing the pastor says. You are not, you're not going to the point where you too can study your Bible and say, look at what I just discovered. Wow, I didn't see that before. I didn't notice that before. Oh, I didn't get the meaning of this Bible verse before. And you share it with someone. Or when you see that, be like, oh, no, 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 that thing pastor said is a bit of an error there. That's incorrect. Because people have, a lot of people have decided to sit back and rely on. If you can go to your doctor and doctor is telling you that, you know, because of that pain in your finger, I'm going to cut off your toe. Are you going to say, oh yeah, doctor, you are the one in charge. You are the one with the knowledge. Do it. You're going to say, ah, doctor, why are you cutting off my toe because of my finger? Now I did say, so people go and research it. If the doctor says you have such and so condition, people go and research it and come back to the doctor and say, eh, that thing, when I researched it, oh, that's not what he did. Now I did. Even me, even me as a nurse. You will see family member back home. The doctor told them they will ring me and say, ah, I went to the doctor, look at what this doctor is saying. What is your opinion? If you can consult people when it comes to your physical life and other things, why can't you consult your Bible, consult others, study and know more about the Bible? Because this is about your spiritual life. 
about your spiritual life. I don't want to derail in what I'm trying to say. I attend the church where sometimes they'll say, oh, brother, so, so, so you'll be the one to, you know, uh, um, you'll be the one to teach next Sunday. They do it. And brother, so, so, so will go and study it, prepare himself, come on a Sunday and present. The day pastor will come to church, you know, there will be no difference because there's somebody else that's going to get up and as if nothing happened. So for TB Joshua to be gone, and for three months, they don't seem to be someone else preaching. They are recycling, you know, as in to recycle his messages. At least, there are a lot of churches now. People should sit back and start telling themselves, when it happens, what is the plan? There are some churches where pastors have been placed so high that the day the pastor drops down, church members will change church because it's no longer the same. But if, that's what I'm if God is the shepherd, even when a pastor dies or pastor leaves, backs or pastor backslide, God is the shepherd. God did not die. God is still God. Now, coming back to the area of should a pastor's wife take over, should pastor's children take over, you know, me have come to the point where I know that a lot of churches will do the things the way they like. Okay? But in my own church that I attend, though, church is not, does not belong to pastor. It is not his family property. Mm. I can, you, we, there's nothing much you can say about how other people decide to run church, right? Now, but I want to address, what's people be like, what do you expect that, uh, 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 what's it called? Were you there when he started? Where do you expect? Were you there when he started? Do you know that, uh, what, about, uh, what are you talking about? It's like David and Solomon. Do you think they will leave their property to other people? Uh, da, 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 da. A church is not anybody's property. Well, it's not supposed to be. It's not. When some people think it must run in families, let me even start. Let me tell you when they say David and Solomon. A pastor is not a David and a Solomon. The Solomon was the ruler of a nation. Okay? David was the ruler. Your pastor is not the ruler of any nation. Are you listening? David in his time and Solomon, they were not the prophets of the, on the land. They were not the ministers of God. They were not the Elijahs and the Elishas. But you guys have turned uh, uh, pastors to David and Elijah and Elisha and uh, Solomon. You told them to go bodyshe. No. David in their own time, Solomon, they were not the Elijahs and Elishas of their time. You understand? They were not the Levites. So th their role was different. They were the rulers of their time. So you don't come here and be saying, Eli uh, Solomon, uh, what's it called? Those are family. See, eh? anointing is not hereditary, it's not genetics. Okay, you cannot transfer anointing genetically from father to son or father, father to children. It doesn't work that way. At the same time, it is not sexually transmitted that you pass it to your spouse. No, you cannot transfer anointing through a kiss. I don't know how that is hard to understand. I've said it all. Now I've re you know I've, now that we know that churches, churches, mm, they can do whatever. But what I'm saying is, they can do, they can do whatever. I Me, mean, I know how it's done in my own church. Okay? So, whatever. But what I'm saying is, see all this, a lot of all these followers of pastors or whatever, a lot of you have to be coming down. You have to be coming down. But at least apply a bit of common sense when you're doing unnecessary argument. You guys have already decided how you want to do or run do. Let them run their clinic. But if you want to be defended, make sure that you know what you're trying to defend. Don't be, you defend it with logic, a bit of logic or common sense. People are seeing it like as things fall apart. After all of that, I saw a video where they, they said, I don't know who this boy, but you can see people leaving the, leaving the, the, leaving the building. Uh, they, some people say they are the apostles being chased away. Some people say they are so and so. But whoever, I don't even know. So I don't have any authentic source as to who they were. Those people that were being led out. There was a military guy there, you know. So I don't know who they were. That we're being led out of the of the building but say uh, the post that i saw they were saying that uh, the wife has finally gone to court and gotten the court order and all of that but now that she's in charge she has the right to organize it the way she wants it or whatever way they want to say so there's this group of people that are being led out so people say they are these people i don't know who they are at the end of the day they are being led out so if they were there before during the time of uh, tb joshua and now that tb joshua is gone whoever is in charge decide that they have to go is no longer the way that tb joshua set it so it's as simple as that this new person whoever new person wants it in a different way and then it brings out the question is is this a synagogue church are things falling apart are, are things being done the normal way or are things being changed at the end of the day whether you like it or not people are going to be watching and say okay what happens next let's see what's going to happen now she's taking over let's see how it's going to be run people are going to be watching 
but I, I'm gonna be honest I like the way like churches like a uh, like four square is wrong I don't know if it's changed now you know I left Nigeria ages ago four square doesn't belong to anybody the pastors are placed on good salaries I believe that if, if a, a pastor of a church whatever you know the wife the man dies you know the wife should have a good pension like a through their husband's work with the ministry where they will have a good pension that they can continue to have a, a good life and stuff like that but the idea of should should family take over should the wife take over should children take over at the end of the day leave your comment whatever your opinions are leave it in the comment section below let's be as simple as that and with that i'm going to say thank you for watching until the next time guys bye bye bye